Welcome to the Profitable Nomad Couple Podcast. We're a show about growing your online business and enjoying a location-independent lifestyle, all while strengthening your relationship with your partner. We are Austin and Monica, a husband and wife duo who run our business remotely so that we can travel the world in constant search for adventure, good food, and new friends. We are here to share practical tips and tricks to help and encourage you wherever you may be on your digital nomad journey. All right, let's dive in. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for being here again and tuning in for another episode. We have some great tips for you guys today. And we are talking today about conflict resolution, I suppose. A lot of people ask us or have asked us when we talk about working together in our business or traveling together, a lot of people say something along the lines of, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could work with my partner without killing them. And so we want to talk about how we work together without killing one another. (laughs) Yeah, by far, that is the most overwhelmingly common response that we get. And there is so much to unpack here. So let's dive in. We want to, first of all, set the scene, I suppose, and let everyone know that conflicts are a natural thing. Just because you have a conflict in your relationship, in your business, that doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. That doesn't mean there's something that needs to be changed necessarily. Conflicts are natural. And no matter how you know well-tempered you are, no matter how much you get along with each other, if you're working together with somebody, whether it's your partner, whether it's a friend or any family member, No matter what, there's going to be some sort of conflict. Some are bigger than others, and we're going to talk about how to keep them small, but don't think that because there's a conflict that there's something wrong. Yeah, I kind of feel like the natural tendency is to feel like any kind of conflict you have is there's something majorly wrong with the relationship, with the business, with like all of these things, and it kind of spirals into something so much bigger than it is. But conflict, as long as it is healthy conflict, is in fact a really integral part of a relationship and a business, and it helps you become better. So let's take a second really quick to define so that we're all on the same page what healthy conflict looks like versus unhealthy conflict. So Unhealthy conflict is is when your anger really kicks in and kind of takes control of the conversation. So normally you can see like yelling, obviously physical violence of any kind is unhealthy always, no matter what the situation is. Ending the communication, so the silent treatment, super passive aggressive, talking over each other, arguing, not listening, not working together anymore, and just you know, I'm sure we've all been in a conversation or in a scenario where we can really, really relate to what this looks like. That is unhealthy and unproductive. Yeah, definitely. We want to make sure that we not necessarily, I mean, you want to avoid major conflict and you want to try and mitigate it as much as you can, but definitely want to stay away from that kind of unhealthy conflict because that's just going to bring everything down. But conflict can be productive in the sense that you, you can come out of a conversation and a disagreement having something better than what you started with. And this idea comes from what's called the edge effect. This is something I love. I think it's super, super cool. So there's a couple of places this is found. In ecology, this thing called the edge effect is when two different ecosystems or habitats are butted up right next to one another. So you have maybe a forest right next to a grassland. And right on the edge of where these two habitats meet is where the most life and the most new species are are living, which is truly amazing that you have more than you could have had with either ecosystem individually. Another place you can see the edge effect is during a sunset or a sunrise. You have a mixture of the dark of the night and then the daytime and the sun. And where those two come together, you you have sunrises and sunsets, and those are incredibly beautiful. But you couldn't have a sunrise or a sunset without having that mixture of light and dark. Those two coming together is what creates more incredible things, more beauty. And so it's the same idea in your business, and your relationship. You have two people who might have different opinions, different perspectives, but when they come together, you're going to come out with something greater than either one of you could have come up with on your own. 
Yeah, and that's really the beauty of building a business together is that combined Austin and I can do so much more than either one of us could have done ever on our own. And it's amazing to watch it all come together. But there are some drawbacks sometimes to working together, like things, ideas sometimes take longer to resonate with other people. An excellent example in our own life is this podcast. I've been uh, kind of pushing for this podcast for over a year. I've really felt like this is a, a stronger form of communication for both of us and a way that we can we can express ideas more fully. Whereas Austin was hesitant that, you know, we weren't ready to take on a podcast. And it just took it just took longer for this new idea um, in our business to resonate with both of us before we can move on and create something fabulous. I don't think that things taking longer is a bad thing either. Like sometimes that can be good because both Monica and I sometimes have a tendency to not think certain things through. And we, we both feel like, oh, this is what we need to do. And we'll jump right into it. But then the other person kind of acts as a buffer. We'll be like, why do we want to do that? Or why is right now the best time? And so it forces you to think a little bit more about your actions. And yes, it takes longer, but also it becomes more thoughtful and more intentional. So if you were to ask Monica and I what our number one tip is for working together and avoiding negative conflict and making sure things run smoothly, our number one tip would be communicate. Communicate the heck out of things. You want to talk about things before they become an issue and you want to make sure you over communicate, or at least what feels like over communication, because the other person doesn't know what's in your head. What's in your head makes sense to you because you're thinking it, but the other person doesn't always think through things the way you do. So you want to talk about everything and you want to talk about it often. Talk about what you're struggling with. Talk about what you think about this blog post. Think, Talk about what you think about this review. Talk about if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're looking forward to something that's coming. You just talk about literally everything. Yeah, to Austin's point, it's important to communicate in a way that does feel like over communication because you do have to relay what is already happening in your head so that you can start on the same page to then progress the conversation further. And it's really important to make sure that this is happening before you start getting really angry or upset about something. So if you have something that's mildly irritating to you, don't let it fester, assuming that the person can tell that it's bothering you. Instead, just when before it becomes a big deal, just say, hey, you know what? It really bothers me that this is happening. So a a good example, I guess, in our life, just a a stupid little example is is, um, one of our phone chargers broke. So we used to have a phone charger here in the office and one in the bedroom. And I would charge my phone at night in the bedroom and Austin would charge this during the day in the office. And so since our phone charger broke, we now are trying to trying to share one. And so often at the end of the day, I'm kind of tired, I'm cranky, I'm ready to just plug in my phone and go to bed, the phone charger was not there and it was in the office. And I just started like getting irritated. And so then I realized that Austin didn't understand why I was irritated. So instead of just being cranky that I keep stealing my phone charger, I can say, hey, you know what? It really bothers me when I don't have the phone charger here at night. Can you help me remember to bring the phone charger back from the office at the end of the day? And so so it's important to make sure that you are communicating things before they, it could have become a big knockdown drag out fight over something as dumb as a phone charger but instead of placing blame on him I I just simply explain to him that it was frustrating for me and I really just wanted to make sure that that we could clear this up before it did become a, a really contentious point. Yeah, absolutely. You know what they say you want to nip it in the bud. And you want to make sure that you are both in a good headspace to have conversations like this. You want to make sure you're not already irritated about something or something else is going on. Like make sure you're both in a space where you can give and receive feedback when you talk to one another and you don't have to make it a big deal. If it's something small, don't blow it up to something more important than it than it should be. Yeah, so so there's no need to sit down and, and have a big intervention. Just make it a casual, normal conversation and create a relationship where you value that communication and where you're having those kinds of conversations often. Yes, definitely. Um, it's also really important to know how the other person communicates. There are different communication styles. And so if you understand how the other person gives and receives communication, 
that's going to make things a lot easier. For example, Monica is a much more verbal processor. So if she's trying to communicate something to me or if, if she, there's something that she wants to sort out, she's going to come and talk to me about it and verbally process through those things. I like to take things a little bit slower. I like to think through them on my own. I especially like writing things out. And so if there's something that I'm trying to figure out, I'll go journal about it or I'll write it on a piece of paper and then I'll understand it better and I can come and talk to Monica about it. So now that we both know how the other person communicates, it's much easier to have those conversations. Yeah, it can definitely be frustrating sometimes. I often come to Austin with half-formed thoughts because I need some kind of sounding board, whereas he then needs to take all that information and go process it where I want more of an immediate answer because we're in the middle of processing it, at least for what it looks like to me. But that's not always the way, like our best solutions that we've come up with have always been when I come to Austin, I verbal verbal vomit on him and then we come to a place where we can say okay now we need to take a break and Austin's going to process it on his own and then we can come back and have a conversation about it together. Building a relationship especially one that is both a personal relationship and a business relationship requires a lot of trust and it requires trust that that your partner can do their job and they can do it well even if it's not how you would have done it It requires the trust that the way they're doing it isn't necessarily always wrong. It's just different than how you would do it. A great way to work together is if you can divide the tasks that need to get done between the two of you, and especially if you can divide them based on each other's skills and abilities. And if if you're really good at organization, give the organizational tasks to that person. Um, But when you divide these tasks, that means you need to trust, like Monica was saying, Trust that the other person can do their job and do it well, and you don't need to butt in and micromanage, and you don't need to come in and change it. You can be confident that they're going to get it done and that you're going to get your job done. And I mean, there has to be trust like that. You have to know that the other person is going to pull their weight. Yeah, working together can either alleviate a lot of the workload or it can double it depending on how how you end up working things out, right? So you can either divide the tasks and both work on something that you're you're good at or I could work on my task and micromanage Austin. And <laughs> it's so much more work. So it's just important to make sure that you you have that trust and and you are okay with things not being done exactly the way that you would have done it. Um, and, and you can do that by, by knowing yourself and knowing the other person really, really well. And I highly recommend that you often show appreciation for what the other person does. This is something that Monica is really good at. And I mean, when the other person does something for you or does something at all in, in the business or in your relationship, thank them for doing it. Just a simple thank you can go a really long way. Yeah. And then a, another really, really important part as far as dealing with conflict, both in your relationship and in the business, is the willingness to walk away. So if, you're, if your conflict ever starts going into that unhealthy realm of conflict, you need to walk away because nothing good is going to come out of a heated argument. You're not going to change anybody's mind about anything while you're upset. So the second you can start to sense that it's becoming unhealthy, be the bigger person and walk away. Yeah, it's going to take some personal strength definitely to walk away in this setting because I think our natural tendency is to fight. It's like if things get really heated, you want to fight, you want to win the argument, <clears throat> but that's not going to be productive. So walk away, be strong. And then when you are in a, in a better mental space to have this conversation, come back to it after you've processed it or after you've cooled off a little bit. Well, and remember that you're a team. There are no winners and no losers. You win together and you lose together. If you walk away feeling like you've won an argument, you've actually lost because your partner, your teammate has lost. And so remembering that you are not trying to win anything. You are trying to collaborate and and create something better. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. You're a team. And so you got to you got to act like and work like a team. Yes, this is something that's a little bit tricky for me as someone who is a verbal processor. I like to to sit down, hash it out, have a hard conversation and get to a conclusion. As we talked about earlier, that's not Austin's style. And so I have been learning a lot 
to be okay with not reaching a conclusion and talking about something multiple times and then walking away and then coming back and talking about it again. So a really good example, recently we um, have decided to move to Europe for 2023. And, and at first, Austin was a little bit resistant to that idea. And I didn't understand why. And I was frustrated. And so I sat down. And I was like, okay, we're going to talk about this. We're going to figure it out. But then I realized that like, Austin didn't really know why either. You know, he had to go and take the time to do some self-reflection and to to consider my point of view and his point of view and, and what was going on there. And so we walked away, I think for like 48 hours. And Probably I, two, yeah, a couple of days. And I didn't have an answer and it was slowly killing me, but I didn't let him see that because I knew he needed the space to process everything. And then he came back and we had this the most beautiful discussion and we came up with some really exciting plans. And it's it was absolutely light. It was game changing. I'm like, man, I need to be better at this all the time because we can have really healthy, productive discussions when I let Austin take the time to process it in the way that he processes best. Yeah, that's a great example. We also want to make sure that you you guys remember to leave business conflicts in the business. And this can get kind of muddy when you're working in business with your partner, but there's business conflicts and there's relationship conflicts and do your best to to not let those bleed into one another because it can be really destructive if you have a business disagreement. Maybe you don't agree on a certain format for your website or a business model. If you take that and then you start arguing about that when you're not working on your business and just hanging out in the evenings, that's that's corrosive and that's not going to help your relationship at all. Yeah. Another example, sorry to interrupt you, but another example that happens quite frequently to us is, is I'll be working on a color palette. I have spent hours on it, building someone's brand. I'm really excited about it. And then Austin comes and he's like, mm, I don't think that blue is a good color. And I could immediately take that and be like, wow, he thinks that I'm a terrible designer. He doesn't like the way I work and like take it very, very personally. Or I could say, all right, let's you know, let me walk away. Let me get, come back with fresh eyes and let me try these colors, rework these colors again. Um, so it's just important to make sure that like, it's okay to point out things in the business that you don't agree with. And then to make sure that you, that you don't take that as a personal attack. Yeah. Possibly my favorite suggestion is find things to laugh about. Often for Monica and I, it's Instagram reels. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, Instagram reels, inside jokes, outside jokes, just find things. <laughs> <laughs> just be dumb. <laughs> just be dumb with each other and laugh about things, tease each other. And that helps ease the tension. It also reminds you that like, you, don't, you don't have to be so serious all the time about business stuff. You can have fun with it and it should be fun. Yeah. Business, starting a business together with your partner is meant to be fun. <laughs> As you're building a business that you love, just just keep in mind that you have the same goals and make sure you know what those are and make sure your partners knows what they are and remind each other what your business goals are, what your life goals are, why you started a business. Remind each other often and then also encourage each other to have personal goals outside the business that they're working in so that they don't lose themselves and you don't lose yourself because that could very quickly become resentment. Yeah. And remembering what your goals are means writing them down, write them down on the notes page in your phone or on your computer somewhere on, on a Google doc, write them down even in a physical journal. But you want to document what your goals are, both individual, collective, for business. And that way you can go back and you can remember what you're working towards and remember that you're both working towards the same thing. At the end of the day, it's really important that coming between your business and your relationship, you always choose your relationship. Do not sacrifice your relationship for your business. It is so easy as a business owner to feel like business is life or death and that things need to happen and they need to happen right now, even though it's 1030 on a Friday night. It's really easy to let the business take over your relationship. Yeah, it is never worth giving up your relationship or sacrificing a relationship to pursue or f advance your business or your business goals. Like ultimately your relationship with each other is much more important. So you always want to prioritize that over everything else. Was it Brendan Bruchard who said 
that we have a lot of successful people, but a lot of times they're successful and alone. And it's because we don't have the goals to, you know, to get somewhere with somebody. We have the goals to get somewhere. And a lot of times getting to that place requires sacrificing all of our relationships around us. So one of the main goals of building a business together is that it brings you together and that you can reach the goal of having a beautiful, successful business, creating the life that you want, and you can do it all together. Yeah. And this goes this goes a little bit more into just relationship advice in general, not necessarily working together, although it fits. You you should put your partner's needs first. Put your partner's needs above your own. If you do that and if you sacrifice your wants and needs for what the other person wants and needs, and if both of you do that, man, that's gonna the power that that has in your relationship is incredible. And you're both going to grow closer together. You're going to trust each other more. You're going to love each other more. You're going to communicate better. You're going to like all just all the puzzle pieces are going to fall in place if you put the other person's needs first. Yeah, it really deepens and creates the sense of trust between you two because ultimately I always know that Austin has my back. And, and vice versa, you know, I really hope that he knows that I have his back because I've proved it time and time again. And that means you need to know what your needs are, but you also need to know and understand what your partner's needs are. A little example, Monica needs, like when we're, we're working together, Monica needs more breaks and more attention than I typically do. And I typically need to finish a task that I'm working on and like, all the way to the end and get it all wrapped up before I can feel good with walking away. So that's a little difference in how we work and a difference in our needs. And Monica understands that. She knows that I have that need. And so when she's going to take a break, she'll always ask me, what can I do for you before I leave? Or, you know, what's on your plate? What can I help you with? And that's that's so awesome for me to have her come and offer that. So I know that she's recognizing how I work. She's recognizing what I need. And she's sacrificing what she needs, which is a a break, and willing to step in and help me with what's going on. And that's so incredible. Well, and ultimately, it benefits both of us because I know that Austin has... (laughs) No offense, babe. You have this way of spiraling and getting really stuck in your frustration and your to-do list. And and sometimes you need a break to be happier and to, to be more lighthearted and, and so we can enjoy our business more together and we can be more creative together. But he is not going to be able to enjoy the benefits of a break until he gets his to-do list done. So a lot of times if I can come in and help some of the things off his to-do list or help him kind of process through whatever he's frustrated with, then I can go on a break. Austin can go on a break. And then we come back and we're both refreshed, feeling more creative, feeling more lighthearted. And we can both enjoy the process of building a business a whole heck of a lot more. (laughs) Yeah, it's really like a breath of fresh air. And like Monica said earlier, it's a good reminder for me that Monica has my back and that she's here to help and support me just like I'm here to help and support her. We're, We're here for each other. Another thought that we want to leave you guys with is where possible, leave work with work. On this idea of taking breaks, you not just take breaks like in the middle of the day, go get a snack or whatever, but like take a break from work. And this can be really hard when you're working together as a couple in business, because if you're business owners, then there's always work to be done. And I think it's good to have, you know, late night conversations about your business and to be talking about what to do and where to go. And I think that's healthy. I think that's normal, but there needs to be intentional time set aside where you're not talking about business go on a date with each other on a Friday night and you know make it a point of saying you know what these things need to get done in our business but they can wait till tomorrow even if you want to work you know if you want to work on Saturday that's fine but for tonight we're going to spend time with each other we're just going to hang out together and we're not going to talk business and you need those times because otherwise work is going to consume everything you do and you're going to lose each other and you're going to lose sight of what's really important. So make sure you you prioritize your relationship. Yeah. 
you, you don't want to become simply co-workers. And I think that's easier to do than any of us ever think it will be. So make sure you are intentionally taking time to go out and have some fun together. We want to remind you guys that conflict is not necessarily bad. Conflict can be a powerful thing in your relationship and in your business to build things better than either one of you could have done. So remember the power of having two people, the power of having conflict and and creating something better, and let it be a beautiful part of your relationship and your business. Let it help you grow and reach places that you couldn't do otherwise. All right, you guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode. We really hope you enjoyed it. Please let us know what your key takeaways were from this episode, and we'll catch you again next week. Thanks for listening and sticking around to the end of this episode. We really appreciate you being here. If you're interested in starting and growing your online business so that you can live as a digital nomad, then grab our free list of online business ideas to help you get started. You'll find it in the link below. See you next time.